Hi, everyone. I'd like to start by saying thank you to the NFL for putting on this incredible competition and allowing us to present today. Our big dateable story starts with championship coach Wade Phillips, who was crazy enough to meet with the four of us in the middle of a pandemic to discuss what makes up a strong defense. He believed first and foremost that it's all about the personnel. So we used that the NFL's tracking data to develop a metric, obviously named Wade, that evaluates individual defenders' effectiveness, and more specifically, how and which defenders are good at containing an offense. Wade stands for Weighted Assessment of Defender Effectiveness. The first part of our presentation will focus on the defender effectiveness portion of Wade. It consists of two main defensive qualities, covered skill and contest skill. We're going to start off by focusing on covered skill. Think of Revis Island. QBs are discouraged to throw in the direction of cornerback with a strong coverage skill. We evaluated coverage skill through what we call target probability. Target probability is a likelihood that a given player will be the target of the QB's pass at any time before the throw. To our knowledge, this type of model had not been seen in the public sphere before this competition, so we think it's important to take a closer look at the things that go into it. We found that a receiver's target share relative to their teammates is the most, most important feature on average. Some other variables that stand out are the receiver position on the field, where the QB is looking, and receiver separation. The right hand plot shows that as the separation between the receiver and close to defender increases, the target probability also increases. This matches what we see when we watch a play unfold. If a receiver has more space between them and a defender, a QB is more likely to throw it their way. To better understand this, take a look at this play from the Week 15 game between the Falcons and Cardinals in 2018. Focusing on number 11, Leo Jones, lined up in the slot. He does not start as a most likely target option. However, after he beats number 20, Buchanan, you can see he becomes more likely to be targeted. The help provided by number 33, Trey Paulson, causes a slight dip in Jones's target probability just before Matt Ryan throws the ball. The other component of defender effectiveness is contest skill. We measured this with completion probability and evaluated it at the time that the ball arrived to give defenders time to react to the throw. Contest skill is all about disrupting the pass when it arrives. Think about ultimate ball hawk Stefan Gilmore breaking up any ball thrown in his vicinity. In these plots, we can look at how catch probability changes for different values of our inputs. On the left, we see that the faster a receiver is moving when the ball arrives, the lower their chance of catching it is. In the middle, we see that the further a receiver travels during a play, the lower their catch probability tends to be. And on the right, we see that more receiver separation increases catch probability until they get about five yards of space, and then it levels off. To tie everything together, we evaluate pass defender impact by allocating credit to defenders on each individual pass play. Both our target and catch probability models use method of inverse distance weights to assign credit to defenders. In this graph, we have the same example play from earlier, the Julio Jones completion. You can see that the nearest defender, number 20, receives the majority, 74% of the credit, but everyone receives some portion of credit, however small. This approach allows us to effectively evaluate defensive performance without assigning specific coverages on each play. While credit is allocated on an individual play, we evaluated players over the course of a season. Wade allows teams to identify talent and understand that defense is a system of parts. Our rankings do a good job of evaluating top performing corners like Stefan Gilmore and Jalen Ramsey, as well as safeties like Tyron Matthew and Minka Fitzpatrick. However, the reality is very few players are good at everything. By understanding your secondary strengths and weaknesses, you can construct a roster with complementary skill sets. Take the Texans, for example. Both Kareem Jackson and Jonathan Joseph are in the top 10 overall at corner, but Jackson ranks 41st in coverage and Joseph is 9th. However, Jackson is second in contest, while Joseph is 26th. Add on the fact that Tyron Matthew is second among safeties in coverage, it makes sense to play him in partnership with Jackson to build a complete defensive system. One other way to use Wade is with in-game matchups by evaluating which DBs should defend which receivers. And lastly, we really appreciate everyone taking the time out of their day to listen to our presentation today. Also, special thank you to my incredible teammates, Ozma, Marshall, and Tony, and best of luck to all the other competitors.